important person in my life has to be my wife. For the past 25, 30 years of being with her, she provides sage advice on a daily basis, grounds me, always has a very analytical yet reasonable approach to the issues and problems when I uh, talk to her. The other person who's been very, very uh, instrumental in my life is my brother, younger brother, actually, who happens to be at Stanford, also incredibly good human being with great heart. And um, unlike me, not at all uh, interested in money. So he always sees things in a great way. But professionally, you know, I've had amazing mentors at Mayo Clinic, David Llewellyn, um, Dan Barry. Those guys have been, of course, very, very important in my life. Um, Reinhold Gons came after my residency, who also influenced my life in terms of getting me into joint preservation and understanding that concept. And then I was very fortunate to land here in Philadelphia, where I uh, developed a very, very close friendship with Dick Rothman, who really had unbelievable uh, influence in my life, both in terms of professionals, but as personal. Dick Rothman used to say was, live below your means. And that was amazing. Uh, it has really, really played a very important uh, role in preventing me from stretching myself financially. So it's allowed me to like expand within my financial means, not to buy the big yacht that I can afford or buy a massive house I can afford or buy expensive cars. And that also has uh, given me latitude to expand my academic uh, uh, life because obviously, as we all know, research doesn't pick. And taking a day or two off in a week to do research instead of running you know, surgical procedures, uh, because I didn't have a massive um, appetite for spending money, that allowed me to sort of put a lot of my energy and effort into the academics, which has uh, clearly impacted my life and uh, orthopedics to a large extent. So that was one great sage advice that Dick Rothman gave me. And then uh, my wife also had a fantastic, uh, you know, one liner was uh, never answer emails until you've had at least 24 hours to digest them, particularly emails that were really tense and confrontational. That has also been amazing because I used to have this uh, real bad habit of returning emails within a few seconds of angry emails. And then that would just slide into uh, a very, very unple unpleasant situation. So that's the second advice that I've had. And my brother always says, you know, never do things for money unless they really are absolutely necessary. And that has also given me great relationship with industry. I was really never greedy with my relationship with them. If there was a relationship that brought something to research department, I would engage in those. And uh, and I've done fine. I've done really, really well. And I have really been incredibly, incredibly grateful for the environment that Dr. Rothman and my great colleagues in Joint Replacement at Rothman provided me to allow me to nurture my academic appetite and at the same time, you know, be a high volume surgeon as well. It looks like a lot of the um, assumptions that we had made in the past have been or are being re-examined. Some of them have really uh, led us to new grounds. Uh, so I see the future of infection management changing in a very drastic direction. We're going to understand the role of microbiome, for example, and what that plays in terms of causing infection in the first place or in the management of these patients, both uh, with surgery and the administration of antimicrobials. I think we're going to understand the Trojan horse theory where microbes travel around the body inside neutrophils or macrophages. In particular, we're going to understand the role that epithelial barrier in the gut or the lack thereof plays in terms of causing infections or causing the immune compromise in some of the patients that we treat. We will move away from the administration of toxic antimicrobials for six weeks. We will be moving towards alternatives such as phages, 
or administration of license enzymes produced by phages. We're going to move towards the modification of surfaces that will make them hostile to microbes and, you know, nanotechnology, and some of which is being developed in Australia, your beautiful country. Um, we're going to actually also examine everything that we've been doing. This whole thing about, you know, take everything out, put an antibiotic cement spacer with a huge amount of antimicrobials, come back six weeks later, eight weeks later, and put it in. That's all going to be questioned. Things that we've been doing hasn't really worked well. And now we're really uh, um, paying attention to the scientific aspects of these. So the future of infection research is really bright, really exciting. And I think young, brilliant men and women who are uh, putting their minds into questioning these policies, procedures, protocols we've had, we've had in place and uh, trying to uh, distill science into this practice is going to be very exciting. I've always thought infection is caused by uh, multiple microbes, not just one. We've been somewhat limited in our ability to prove that theory because culture is just so primitive in its approach. You can only grow one bacterium or fungus, it's hard to really get a whole picture of the profile of organisms that exist in a given scenario. Uh, we all know that the microbes live in harmony in a community. One of them orchestrates the infection, the others are there to jump in when the circumstances are right. So with the use of next generation sequencing in recent years, we're beginning to sort of get there and see that signal and see how important that is. Because you've seen, Sina, and you know, in the management of infections, we will uh, go and put a patient through two-stage exchange, a patient who was infected with Staph aureus and uh, realized a year later they are infected with Pseudomonas or E. coli or fungus. And we've always thought that these are new infections. And they are new infection by definition because culture never saw them in the first place. But uh, the uh, next generation sequencing and molecular mechanism is allowing us to understand that no, maybe they were all there, the DNA signature was there, but they were not perhaps active uh, culprits at the time. So that's an area where I think it is going to be very, if, 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 it, if it's proven to be true, it's going to really change the way we approach infection moving to the future. It's going to have, you know, approaches in the general sense of probiotics or broader spectrum antimicrobials, etc. So this, these will become very important for our future. Being in the uh, company of my family, I have two kids, uh, beautiful, extremely smart, very fun kids. My son, who's a fantastic golfer. My daughter who used to be a fantastic golfer. She doesn't enjoy it as much but brilliant. They also ground me and of course my wife. So a fantastic weekend would be playing golf with my family, drinking beer or Captain Coke and uh, Captain Morgan and Coke in a beautiful spot like playing in California or some uh, great spots in the world. Uh, that's really my definition of a great weekend. favorite book is actually Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundra, an old book. Uh, to some extent, I identified with the character Thomas, and I love Milan Kundra's books, all of them I've read. Uh, but I also have a favorite uh, uh, movie, and the favorite movie is called The Name of the Rose. Sean Connery, very old, I don't know if you've seen it. Spectacular, it's about Francescans and how church tried to stifle... Uh, uh, science uh, and comedy. So these books were uh, banned from church for a long time. I'm not a religious man. I have a huge respect for people who are religious, but I, I do start to really feel very uncomfortable when somebody's trying to force their religion on me. I think we all have the liberty of deciding to be religious or not be religious. We should all practice our religion within the confines of our own world and not try to force. So, um, and coming from Iran, which I, I assume that's where you are from also with your last name, 
we've seen how uh, dictatorship in the name of a religion has uh, uh, destroyed the lives of millions of people and driven that beautiful country into poverty and abyss and how horrible politics combined with uh, religion has uh, led to the demise of uh, numerous, numerous thousands, if not millions of long, young lives. I think that movie summarizes what dictatorship, dogmatism in the name of religion could do. And um, I'm just so glad to see that in today's world, many of us are open to these, uh, uh, the uh, primitive and unproven uh, religious values that some uh, people hold so dear to their heart and in the process hurt science. So I'm all about science and I also have utmost respect for people who are religious, but again, they should really practice the religion in the confines of their own world and not try to influence the others.